Hi, hello. My name is Manuel Hernandez. And today in character design, we are going to talk about character and how character is everything. The title is not casual. If you think about this, this is the main idea of the module. And we'll explain through this lesson why it is. By doing so, we are going to explore character creation and how character creation interacts with the plot. All uh, the characters we're going to use are uh, well-known examples of uh, movies, uh, video games, comic books. If you don't know them, maybe you can uh, use these as ideas for exploring your free time. We are going to talk about these uh, concepts in the sense of a methodology for improve your writing or to help you to uh, achieve a better product. Let's start with a, a very well-known story, uh, Cinderella. Who doesn't know about this fairy tale? Most of you probably are more familiar with the movie. There is uh, significant differences between the original story and the movie, but we are not going to talk about that. We are going to try to get to the uh, main story, to the, the most canonical vision of the story, as you might remember from the movie, for example. Cinderella, for example. Who doesn't know this story? Most of you will be maybe more familiar with uh, the movie by Disney, though it's a quite old movie. Uh, but this is the typical thing we, we, we watched when we were uh, children. So uh, let's see if you remember some of the elements of the plot. First of all, what is the basic need uh, that uh, Cinderella wants to, to satisfy? And think about this because needs are the most important thing when defining a character. So Cinderella wants to go to the ball. Everybody knows. That is the immediate goal. There is maybe an ultimate goal. There's something uh, more deep not sometimes that well explicitly stated, something like, you know, uh, progression. I mean, if you remember the story, uh, Cinderella is an orphan, lives with the stepmother and the stepsisters, is not very well treated. Does it uh, sound as well familiar? Yes, uh, movies or other stories like this uh, Harry Potter uh, might be uh, in some aspects, copying or uh, uh, referencing to other classical narratives. Okay, uh, it might be just because it's a very common uh, uh, trope. So, so first of all, would be defining uh, in the stories defined this overall need. Okay, this progression, this you know, she's not happy. The character thinks, I would like to have some fun. I would like to go to the ball. So obviously that is the immediate goal. And she asks about that to the stepmother. But as you might remember, the stepmother denies that uh, request. See, the character is denied. And that is very common. The first attempt to achieve something, it doesn't succeed. And this is important because obviously if not, we, we wouldn't have such a long story, no? would be a much shorter story. So a uh, character has a second opportunity. In this uh, scenario, as you remember, this is a, a fantasy story. So obviously the uh, second opportunity is uh, through the uh, entrance of this um, uh, fairy godmother and this magic and the possibility of going to the party without nobody knowing or recognizing her. So there are some conflicts about taking advantage of this second opportunity. If you think about that, this is explicitly stated to the character. Cinderella, remember that at 12 o'clock, this and this will happen. The magic would vanish. Even with that, the character decides to go for it. So she goes for it. And everything goes well. Everything goes well. She has a lot of fun. Uh, she dances even with the prince. So, magic. 
imaging. Okay, and uh, in a moment this doesn't work that well and it starts to fall apart. This is all part of the second art. If you think about that in terms of arcs, uh, you will have a first, uh, you know, section, first um, uh, part of the narration, the second part are the complications, are the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, um, the challenges. And the third one usually is the resolution. So, all fall apart, it's complicated, you know, very spectacular, all the magic, vanishing. There is a moment of crisis. This is important and it's usually the beginning of the third act. So if you think about that, uh, in, this, um, uh, in this part is when the character feels everything is lost. She cannot do anything, you know, she's not going to be happy. She will never achieve the goals. Uh, and she cries. So um, there is a moment of climax. It's a moment of truth. It's a moment where uh, everything can be either to achieve the, char the character's goal or not achieve that. Okay. So in that moment, precisely, uh, you uh, uh, is where you present um, a confrontation, and sometimes it's a physical confrontation. Sometimes it's only a, a psychological element, a confrontation uh, in terms of psychology. And here, obviously, is the tension of the character uh, trying to, uh, to fit into the, uh, the Sioux glass, the glass Sioux. Okay, so that is the climax, and then the, comes, uh, the truth comes out, everything sorted out, the character will be uh, happily married with the prince, etc., etc. Another way of thinking uh, in characters is to create an opposition axis. This is a very well-known um, uh, semiotic uh, approach, the semiotic square. Uh, here, uh, what you are doing is considering the characters as uh, embedding different ideas. And uh, this kind of allegories, these this characters representing ideas, can be uh, in the narrative opposing to other characters, which is quite interesting. You don't need this confrontation to only uh, talk about characters. It could be other elements of the story. But one of the ways of thinking about this is through characters. This is the classical uh, semiotic square. There are elements that are uh, um, opposed, okay? They are incompatible, okay? Well, uh, they are elements that are complementary, okay? They are not the same, but they are not really the opposite, okay? So let's see the, the difference here. For example, if we talk about maturity, maturity, for example, can be, imagine if we use it in another square, we use uh, responsibility. Of maturity or responsibility is a concept that we can understand as different from youth or pleasure or whatever. Youth and maturity are not incompatible. They can happen, okay? Uh, but usually are not together. They are complementary, okay? So that is why they are related this way, okay? But then you have other elements that are associated to them. Like, for example, society, okay? And then uh, the instincts or the nature, which is more associated to youth, okay? So in that sense, uh, society and uh, youth and maturity and our nature are elements that become more contradictory, okay? Uh, when uh, or uh, nature uh, evolves, that brings you to responsibility. So there is a clear uh, relationship there, an indirect relationship. The same way uh, society and rules seems to be conflicting with the pleasures of the youth, okay? So this 
uh, are complex ideas sometimes. This is something you can have some uh, different conceptualizations about this. But if you think about that in terms of character representation, it will be much more easy to understand. So, for example, in popular narratives, it's very frequent to have characters that represent, uh, you know, youth, and characters that represent, you know, maturity. And you have, for example, uh, characters that are sometimes enemies, and they are enemies precisely because they share different values. So, for example, think about Sonic the Hedgehog. And how Sonic the Hedgehog is young, fast, uh, is um, a sporty, you know, all these things. And then you have uh, Impulsive, maybe. Uh, you have also the enemy, Robotnik, which is supposed to be intelligent, obviously old, uh, fat. So there is here the definition of two characters, precisely in relation to their contradictions, so their opposition, sorry. Another classic example, you know, think about Peter Pan versus Hook, for example, Hook Captain. Again, youth versus uh, society versus getting old. Okay, remember, it's all about overall needs. Think about uh, stories like um, this uh, Breaking Bad, for example. Uh, the richness, the complexity of the story, it's uh, all related to the overall needs of the character. What is exactly um, Walter White looking for? Why he is uh, becoming a drug lord? Uh, he has a family, he has a job that should be fine. Why he wants something else? And that is basically what it creates the, the complex and, and well writing script that it is. Uh, think about the zombies of Walking Dead. Very simple, very clear, state, stated very explicitly. No, they want to eat you, they just want to kill you. If they were looking for another thing, that would be a totally different story. Sometimes uh, motivations of the character are also a representations of another idea that can be, you know, bigger than themselves. Like, for example, in this epic story, Troy, it's based on the Iliad, uh, this famous epic tale, and uh, you have this uh, element of, uh, you know, uh, the character that is selfish and is fighting for himself, for the glory, versus the other character, uh, in this case Hector, uh, uh, performed by Eric Bana, this one is Achille, uh, it's performed by Brad Pitt, and you have this idea of family, you know, versus individual, and, uh, you know, uh, the city versus, uh, you know, uh, these uh, invaders. Best stories are done. Uh, best stories are performing characters that are complex and dual, have elements of contradiction sometimes. These uh, are, for example, stories where uh, a character is precisely magic because of that duality. Okay, think about uh, uh, the headshot. Probably the animal that you will find uh, dead, unfortunately, in the, on the road. How that become a leader? How that become a hero? Active, fast, uh, you know, funny, all these things. Well, that is the magic of, of the story, I guess. Uh, if you want to imagine a story uh, that combines a turtle and a motorbike, you can do it by creating a nice character, creating a turtle with wheels or a turtle on uh, on skates or turtle with wings I don't know the duality here the the lack of speed of the turtles compensated with this element that you create this is a turtle but all these things if you think about the stories more popular stories are based on duality think about the the rats in, in um, 
in Ratatouille, okay? but who would think of a rat as the best cooker ever? Brilliant. All stories uh, have uh, characters, but not always is very clear the progression of the character. Uh, some stories, and that is why precisely many or, uh, in the popular culture it's very common to find the stories featuring teenagers or young people, uh, these stories are presenting a character in evolution and there's uh, a test of character, there is a, a, a growth during the, the, the whole narrative. Sometimes this is not that clear, sometimes you have things like uh, very implicit uh, I like, for example, this video game, Shelter 2. This is a video game about a family of Lynx. It's a kind of saga, but at the same time, it is um, a way of creating a narrative with characters that don't speak by themselves. Uh, they speak through their actions. But basically, you can see how they are evolving and how they are uh, growing and surviving, uh, you know, uh, fighting, starvation, mating, and all these kind of things, and, and, and that is the, the beauty of that game. If uh, you want to know about uh, mythical structures, I would recommend, uh, strongly recommend this book. Uh, Christopher Bogler offers a very insightful vision of the use of archetypes in uh, modern cinema. Uh, what Buckler does is to combine uh, these anthropological uh, tales, structures, uh, using Joseph Campbell's uh, famous uh, uh, approach, this idea of the hero's journey that you might have uh, heard about, and combines that with uh, the uh, psychoanalytical vision uh, from Jung about the universal archetypes. And if you are not familiar with this, Jung is a very famous uh, psychologist. Uh, the idea behind uh, his writing was that these tales, these characters, lived inside us and they were part of our cultural heritage that is parallel to our genetical uh, heritage. So that, therefore, when we dream, or when we read stories from other cultures, we already know uh, some of the things that are going to happen because these are stories that have lived with us, uh, within us, for generations. So uh, this is obviously a very interesting idea, very complex, very powerful. Uh, the way it is uh, presented in the book is through the identification of different archetypes I'm not going to enter in detail to every single of these uh, archetypes, but uh, just as an example, we have the uh, idea of, for example, the herald, a person or a creature, an element that is bringing you news. But uh, the thing is that these characters can be at the same time a couple of things. For example, uh, a shape shifter is a character that changes uh, his or her shape. But why is this person doing that? It might be to joke of you, can be a trickster, or can be an ally, can be someone who is, uh, you know, helping you, or it can be your enemy. So obviously, uh, this combination between different roles makes the characters uh, even more interesting. Characters uh, need, we have to say before, dual. Uh, there are contradictions, obviously, but there is at the same time consistency. Consistency means uh, there is some kind of logical uh, uh, consequences of their needs and their skills. Okay, they, they are of, um, they have some personalities and this personality has consequences when they work. When they, when they talk, when they uh, uh, interact with other characters. And uh, that consequence is logic, and that is consistency. Consistency is not realism. A character uh, could be realistic, yes, but might be also boring. Not the same, but it could be. A character could be 
consistent and not realistic. Think about a superhero or a zombie or many other fictional creatures. Uh, the genre as well plays a role in this. Comedy, uh, for example, can present situations that are absurd, but uh, uh, they are consistent. Okay, so it is important to understand characters. Uh, they have their own logic, and the logic of the character reflects the logic of the whole narrative world. Characters evolve. We have talked before about. Uh, that character that is young and obviously get older through the story. Even characters that are mature or are older can also evolve. Think about, for example, Iron Man. I mean, it's presented already as a grown man, uh, 35, maybe 38, so well, although obviously the actor would be like 15 years older or something like that, I don't know. So the, the character presents a very similar arc in each movie and uh, not necessarily the same story or the same character that, uh, that is presented in the comic books. The story in the movies, if you remember, is a character that usually is very selfish, is very self-centered, but learns always to collaborate uh, with the Avengers, with the family, with the friends, with a surrogate uh, song that shows up in the, in the third movie. So this is basically the same arc, movie after movie, although slightly different, so it is not exactly the same movie. But that is the way the, stru the stories are structured. If you think about the movies of James Bond in comparison to previous uh, um, uh, visions of this, uh, the James Bond saga, previous adaptations, previous movies by other actors like Roger Moore or Sean Connery, Timothy Dalton. Uh, in this occasion, uh, Daniel Craig, the last um, uh, series of movies, is a less mature character. And you can see more clearly how these movies are connected and how this creates its own arc. Uh, video games as well are serial narratives and they uh, feature characters that can evolve. Okay, Not, so, not only graphically, like, for example, it's very clear in the case of Tom Ryder's Lara Croft, but also in the complexity. And right now, for example, there was a, a reinvention of the saga featuring a younger Lara Croft. We have talked about mythical structures. Some stories, like uh, Harry Potter, are clearly echoing that uh, uh, mythical structures. So, for example, it's not difficult to see Harold. Uh, in the um, in the Harry Potter world, no, you have all this familiar like uh, it's Hot Witch, this uh, Snow Wall, and um, uh, Head Witch, sorry, <laughs> and uh, these uh, these other characters like for example, uh, you know Shadow Mentors or uh, Shadow Enemies, okay, like these ones or the Mentor Mentors, okay. What is exactly um, the figure of Snape? It's obviously a shapeshifter, some aspects changing, you know. All these things uh, are very interesting readings of uh, what Harry Potter can be. Uh, but I think uh, the key here is also to reflect about the success uh, of this uh, franchise based on the complexity of uh, the network of characters. So, Complex network, many characters, many possibilities, many stories. And that is why the narrative seems so consistent. Characters need also weakness. Again, characters are not perfect. Characters have contradictions. Characters are consistent, but character has weakness. So uh, you have uh, uh, usually that uh, the situation that the, the weakness is reflecting the motivation of the character. So uh, the, if a character is, is very motivated in achieving social uh, respects, uh, achieving the, the love of uh, uh, the society, for example, maybe it's a character with uh, a lack of confidence or maybe it's uh, very self-centered because has learned not to have the support of the society. So obviously all these things are coming together. Okay. 
the character from the Green Book is a character that essentially learns uh, to overcome this uh, racism that is uh, derived from the society itself. No, I mean, uh, has also other good things. No, it's a family uh, member. is uh, is a very respect uh, respectful father. You know, uh, it's just a, a member of a particular kind of society and a particular approach to life. And obviously, uh, you know that is 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 a challenge that he has to overcome, no? To to overcome this racism. So uh, all these uh, uh, are just visions about how characters can be richer and complex. Uh, I think uh, we all agree that uh, sometimes more fun characters, uh, the most fun are the billions. Okay. And uh, billions are also a uh, result of a good design. Okay, think about the Angry Birds, cute, uh, fun, and uh, you know, uh, in some aspects, loving uh, billions that are the pigs. Uh, in other narratives, like for example, Japanese popular culture, it's very common to find enemies that become allies. Okay, it is a very interesting twist in the story, especially in serial narratives. People express uh, the, their love for the characters in a novel or in a manga or a TV show or whatever. So they transform the character into an ally. Okay, so it gets still kind of the same element. And it's, it's really working well. Uh, if you think about Godzilla, even the monster, the most famous monster from Japanese culture, depending on the movie, it has been also an ally. It has been working together with uh, the humans, protecting humanity against other monsters. Characters need to be complex. Defining this complexity is just as a result of the different layers of information that we have about the character. So Julie Selvo, again the uh, author of this book, is defining the difference between uh, 3D characters, characters that have a full story, a well-defined moral, what is good and what is not good for them. Again, this is obviously depending on the character. Uh, what are the, their goals? Uh, and this, the history of the character. What change uh, um, have uh, experience as characters? Sometimes uh, secondary characters, characters that are uh, only 2D, they, we don't have that much information about them, but they still they are very interesting, very loving, and sometimes uh, uh, in the big franchise, think for example things like Star Wars or whatever, we we want to create new stories about those secondary characters because people express their love about them. So uh, it seems you know a kind of opportunity to explore uh, better the, the the narrative world. Of course, you have also the first dimension characters. Characters like, for example, in this kind of uh, action movies. I'm thinking, for example, in John Wick. And you have these characters that, I mean, yeah, probably they have their story and they have uh, a lot of uh, things to tell, but we don't really care about it because uh, their time on, on the screen is, is quite limited, so we don't really care about that. It's a good practice uh, in many uh, popular uh, culture industries, many creative industries, to create amounts of information, big, uh, large amounts of information about the characters. For example, this is the concept of the Bible, the character's Bible, and it's basically a text that uh, tells you everything about the character. This is a very common practice, for example, in TV, sitcoms, and stuff like that. In these Bibles, you can see um, uh, everything about the character, but basically it's the history of the character. If you think about that, and again, coming back to the dimensions, uh, a character that is a 2D character in many aspects, like this uh, uh, Donkey Kong, uh, can be transformed into a, a main character, 3D character, and also the hero of the story. So that transformation is quite interesting. And of course, we could say that this narrative is totally different from this other narrative. But the character, these two characters 
are, are linked, obviously they're supposedly the same character, what you do is a, make a evolve the character by adding more and more information about it. The same way you can create more richer uh, characters if you add information about the history. Information can be backwards, you can add something about their past, or it can be directed forwards, okay? The goals, the needs, the motivations, explaining better what is the future of the character. Motivations can be also information. So information backwards, it would be the history of the character. Information forward would be the future of the character. It would be the motivation, the needs, the goals of the character. How we can create this character's Bible? Just adding information is maybe questioning about the character, making ourselves questions about what the character has, what the character, uh, the way the character would behave in a particular situation. And that's uh, basically what I wanted to say. Characters are dual, characters are complex, characters are created after some uh, apparent contradictions that make them to be more interesting, more believable, not necessarily realistic. Characters evolve in many ways. They need to evolve. And uh, characters drive the plot, okay? The more characters you have, the more complex the uh, work is. Uh, you don't need many characters on a story, but if you do characters, you should be sure uh, what is the level or definition you want to give to them. I mean, if you want to create 2D characters, 3D characters, first dimension characters, and when in the story this uh, information should be displayed. Some directed work for this week. Uh, would be basically to work on your character. And I think uh, it can be a good idea to try with more than one character. And not uh, thinking of this as, oh, this is my assignment, I'm going to do this for my character. It might be a better idea to practice these skills with different characters. Another example of exercise you can do by couples or individual, individually, by couples or individually, you can be uh, making yourself questions about the character to try to create this uh, Bible or just to create a, a good dossier about the character. Think about these questions we commented before briefly. Any of these can be a good idea to explore. Okay, and think about what you have defined of the character before in order to make this to make sense. All these are... Uh, strategies to get to know better your character. So uh, finally these are the finally these are the references I uh, used in this uh, presentation. Feel free to explore them. Uh, these are uh, materials that you can access through the library. So this is uh, all. Uh, I hope uh, you have enjoyed this uh, lesson and if uh, you want to know more about this, uh, maybe we can um, explore other sources or I can uh, give you some ideas, um, maybe talking in the lab or making an appointment if you want. Or maybe we can uh, have a conversation all together in the campus forums. So um, uh, nothing else. Okay, uh, take care and see you next week.